Hello all my wonderful coloring friends. Today I'm here to do a page from Birds in the Forest. If you saw this flip through then you know that I had a little question at the end to figure out which page to do first and it was between this page and this page and everybody overwhelmingly picked this page. No one pick that page. So I thought it would be fun to do this as a color chat. So I'm just going to try and do my best to accomplish that. Um, I don't want it to take too long. So I may speed up filming in certain spots and have to do voiceover, but you know, we'll figure it out as we go. I just don't want it to be a very long video so it doesn't cause anybody pain. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've taken some time to think about what I want to do, and I think, no guarantees, because I do change my mind as I go, if you're interested in following this, if it's a series or if I get it all done in one video, I think I'm going to do um, watercolors for the sky, and I'm going to use alcohol markers for all of the image parts, and then come back in with colored pencils. Now, I haven't picked my watercolors, I haven't picked anything except my markers, because... That is the quickest part of this, and I'm going to do that first. So I picked my Ohuhu pastel markers. I don't know what's going up first, my supply haul or this page. So these are new, and I've never used them yet because um, they've only been in a haul video. I have them swatched on these two cards that came with them. And this is where I said before I wish I could do a live stream. I just haven't figured it out yet. But I don't know if I want to use this pale cream so that the moon is more orangey yellow or this lemon chiffon so it's really, really pale. Um, being that I feel like all of this is very tropical, I think I want to go with the pale cream. Like, I'm not even thinking about using a gray. So, let's find the pale cream, which is, if you're following along, if you want to color with me and have these markers, pale cream is E293. And I will make sure to put as much as I can on the screen so you can read it as well. Pale cream is what we're using for our moon. And it appears there's a piece of moon right in here between the two little lovebirds. So I'm going to get that colored in first. And there's a piece down here between the bird and the flowers. But yeah, if... The video does well. If people seem to like watching this, I'm going to try and do more of it. But I always feel like anytime I do a color along, I lose people because um, it takes me more than one video usually. Because I don't want to keep you here for hours while I color a page. I lose a lot of people in between, you know, part one and part two and part three or whatever, however long it goes. Um, it's definitely a drop in who's watching or coloring along. So I don't want to bore anybody. Um, my haul videos are what get the most views because it seems like that's what people want to watch from me anyway. So I do tend to post more of those. If we're shaking, it's because I'm using my um, my stand that screws onto my desk. And once I'm not trying to hurry up and color something this big, it won't be shaking anymore. And these markers feel a bit dry to me, which is odd since they're, you know, brand new. But we'll see. Maybe it's just not there yet. I don't know. I just want to go over that part again. So yeah, we will stop shaking once I'm down to something more manageable in size that I'm not worried about. Um, also, I have my other stand I can bring upstairs and try that. Because lately I've been filming in two areas of the house. <laughs> and it's horrible because I have a whole room dedicated to coloring and crafting and filming, which is my studio, and that's where I am now. And then I actually wound up taking my other stand down to the lounge for when 
I want to film coloring. Like I have a couple um, videos ready to go. Or not ready to go, but filmed. And like I just need to edit them. Um, but I've been doing a lot of coloring and filming it just in case I want to make a video. Like if it turns out really well. Because I don't know about most of you, but I don't know how my stuff is going to turn out until it's done. You know, like, sometimes it looks like it's on the path to being really nice, and then it, it isn't. Or it looks like it's going to be trash, and then it isn't, and I didn't film it. So I've just, my camera's got a really big memory. So now I just throw everything on there, and if it goes sideways, then you delete it, and nobody knows about it. Well, I mean, now you do, because I'm running my mouth about my secrets, but... <laughs> If it turns out good, it's always something I can make a video of with a voiceover. So, I've been trying that lately, and uh, we haven't had any videos yet. But I do have footage that when I have the time and feel like dealing with microphones and things. Because I film on my phone, and I can just film. And then if I do voiceover that has to be with a microphone and that's on the computer and I don't necessarily feel like doing that although I should talk to David for those of you who are new that's my partner he's a voice actor so he has an entire booth set up for voiceovers um yeah I don't want to try and take over another part of the house but maybe using his booth would be easier because I could just stand there and get it done also I want to state that I don't normally have hand pain. These markers are kind of oval shaped and they have the point, I guess, in a very specific spot on all of them. Let me see. Yeah, it's like on the, so the fat part is what's in your hand like that. They're giving me a little cramping, interestingly enough. Um, I mean, I can continue. I'm just not used to having any issues. So there's our what it, they're calling pale cream, our moon, and we need to color our birds. Oh, I guess I should have thought about that a little more because of their their beaks, but I did not. And I've already said I can color these birds any way I want. I'm trying not to give myself a hard time um, because I don't like coloring birds, but I thought these birds were so cartoony that really it wouldn't matter. So now I'm going to get uh, E183, which is Lipstick Natural. And I'm going to use that to do the uh, branch here. And I probably will speed some of this up. Like when I color the flowers, you only need to see me color one of them if I'm going to do them all. I don't know, but if I do them all the same color, you're definitely not going to need to see me color all four. Um, so parts like that I can just kind of quickly go through. I don't want to get markers from another set. I want to do everything with one set. And then I want to do everything with the one set of pencils. Like that kind of way. Because really, I don't want to drag everything out. And... Sometimes it's a little easier if you just have one thing. And if you guys only have that one thing too, you know, better for all of us. Okay, that's the end of the branch. We end with the flowers on the edge. So now we need something. I want to do the beaks and the claws. Claws is the word we want. And I do, I want it to be like fun and vibrant. But I got to keep in mind that I use that pale cream there. So I'm going to go with this insane mellow peach, which is kind of fluorescent, but I like it. Um, like I said, could be trash, could be good. We're going to find out at the end, aren't we? All right. This is what the cap looks like. That's why I can't find it. I'm going to use a thin end here for the claws and hope we've got enough of a difference. I mean, I can definitely get more of a difference to it when I put the pencil on top but I still don't want them to look the same right now because that will bore me and make it harder for me to find them later they're different enough all right let's get his little beak 
I love how my brain is instantly trained. She has eyelashes and he doesn't. So that's the boy and that's the girl. They could both be girls. They could both be boys. I don't know who they are. They're just birds. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why that's a thing that I do. Okay, so now we've got flowers and birds left. I only want them to be different colors because I think that's more fun. And I'm on this horse. I'm hoping this is in the screen. I can't see. Uh, th this horseradish and this horizon green are making me real happy. Not together necessarily, just happy. I've decided this bird is going to be B292 light sky blue and B996 frost blue. So let's see how that goes. Um, we're going to use the thin end again because I feel like that's just... Oh, wrong marker. This is the darker color. I'm using that for the outside feathers and the tail. And I'm going to go ahead with a thick one. Thick edge chisel tip to make it a little quicker for me. So if you do like seeing these videos um, and you follow the channel, you know most of the books I have or you can look through my flip throughs or book hauls and you'd be able to see what I own. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more of these because I'm going to be coloring anyway. It doesn't matter if I'm on camera or not. <laughs> and I could definitely do it on camera. And if I just don't feel like talking, I can do a voiceover later. And I'm going to make that part of this anyway. I don't think it is, though. All right. Yes, I like this color. These markers feel drier than normal. Oh, hoo -hoo's, but I don't know why. And then I'm going to use B996 Frost Blue for the rest. Oh, I just found more of her wings, and that's okay. Because they're over there on her other side of her body. I'm making all the marker noises. Hopefully I'll get um, one of my newer sets of pencils too that were in my art will be in the hall that's coming up soon um, and try them out on here. I want to do the top of her eye with the darker blue and leave the bottom the lighter blue. I like that. Okay, she's done. Now we need a color for the other bird. And I think I'm going to go ahead with a green because I was looking at those. Or maybe I'll make him pink and they'll be pink and blue. But I don't know. I'm going to go with G189 Horseradish and G794 Yellowish Green. I just have to find them. Well, that was easier. Okay, so those are the two colors we're going to use on him. And I'm going to do the same thing. Darker colors on the outside feathers, lighter colors on the inside. Because, you know, that's how I feel it should be. I don't know as of right now if there's anything to learn by watching me color. Because it's really basic. I'm literally just coloring in everything with a marker. No shading of any kind on the markers. No blending. Um... I will come back in with the pencils, like I said earlier. And I'm definitely going to be doing something with this background. It could be watercolor or acrylic. I'm not sure yet. Haven't gotten that far. And that's later me's problem. So, <laughs> hmm. I'll make my own little line here for the end of these feathers. And then we need the yellowish green for the rest of him.
And I could have done them all in rainbow colors. I'm trying to keep like a limited palette for this one. I don't want to be all over the place. I'm sure that would look nice too though. Just it's not where my head is today. And I do have a tendency to like, I don't think it's boring necessarily, but I tend to be like, let's not use a bunch of colors all at once. And that doesn't mean that using colors is bad. It's just the way my brain sometimes works. So now we're going to need different green because I want to do the leaves. And I don't want them to be the same. I'm going to go with this uh, horizon green. It's kind of tealy, but tropical, right? So let's go that color. We'll go G190, which is green horizon. And that's for the few little leaves we have here. I don't think I should use the chisel tip because I think when I get to the points, I will destroy everything. Because that's how I roll. So there's one set of leaves and the second. All right, and all we have left are our flowers. And I feel like they could be a couple of colors if we wanted. They don't all have to be the same color. I'm going to do my flowers in pink, yellow, and orange. So my orange color is going to be powder pink, which is E194. So let's go ahead and get started with those. And I'm going to use the chisel on this one because I want to get it done quick. And I feel like I won't go too far out of the lines on this guy. All right. And then I want to do one over here. Eh, that's very close to the sky color. So you're a flower, you're a flower, you're a flower, and you're a flower. We'll do this one in the peach. At least that's what I see. I see four flowers on this side. I could be wrong, but there we go. One is peach. Then we're going to use, um, move these over so you can see them. I'm going to go with shadow pink for my pink flowers because the rest of them are very bright and I don't necessarily want that. And again, I'm just going to use the broad tip, the chisel, and I'm going to do this one. And that's enough of a difference for, I, for when I go over with pencil. Just want to get to the edges without overdoing it. And then this one will be pink. And I did my extra one pink because that's my favorite color. And for yellow, we're going to do lemon chiffon, which is here, Y196. And that'll be our last flower. took a few minutes off camera and changed my camera stand to the one that's more stationary and I got out my Derwent Chromaflows because that's what we're going to use to finish coloring the birds and do some shading and detailing. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. Um, I guess we'll start with the green bird and I'm going to get basil or obsidian. I'll start with the basil and see what it does and then we'll move to the obsidian if it's not dark enough. How's that? And I'm just going to color in the bird's wings a little bit just to give some depth to them. 
And I'm going to go ahead and continue this and I will just speed this process up. Okay, so all I did was take like the basil green and bring it, and that's number 1600 also, by the way, in the chroma flows. I just took it down three quarters of the way on all the feathers, and then we have to color the rest of the green bird, and I think I'm gonna go with a 1610 green meadow, and then I'm just gonna add some like darker shading where the feathers meet his little underbelly to start. And it's not a lot of color, but it feels like it's enough to just make him not look so flat. And I'm really hoping that my hand is not covering the coloring because I'm left-handed. And this camera is set up on the right-hand side of my, or the left-hand side of my desk. So, hopefully, we're getting a good, clean shot. If not, I am just shading the bottom of this bird. And now I'm pulling the color out lightly so it doesn't look, like, blocky. I am going to twist my book because I have trouble if I don't. I'm going to get under her, or this bird, the bluebird's feathers, and in between them, like, it was shaded, and I think I want to do a little bit on each of the head feathers. Like I said, just to get more color in there. And I think you could do these birds like in rainbow colors. I just didn't. I am going to go over the basil that I did coming up out of the feathers just to blend it better than it was, if I can. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna come up here too and do under his eye. And there we go, we've got a little green bird. And then I'm gonna do the blue bird the exact same as the way I did the green one. So I'm gonna do that real quick, uh, sped up. For the dark blue, I'm going to do denim, which is 1,200. I'm going to grab that. And for the lighter blue, bondy blue, number 1410. And yeah, like I said, I will speed this part up and I'll be right back. We have a green bird. We have a blue bird. Now we have claws and beaks. And I'm going to what? Let's see. I just need to move it over so I can get a good idea what I have. I'm actually going to use 400 and 410, which is flame and melon. So I'm just going to do the parts where they round over with the flame. And then I'm going to use the melon to pull out the flame so there's not as much of a difference between the pencil and the marker. So that should give me like a mid if I do that. And this is just fairly quick. We're just coloring in all these claws. Right? That's what birds have, their claws. And then we'll do her. I just want to go along the top. And then I want to get the bottom portion of her beak. And hmm, I think I'm just going to go along the bird's head for this one. And then with the melon, uh, number 1410, just going to go over all of that. And come out past it a ways so that, you know, like I said, there's a mid between the marker and the darker pencil. So 
So if you're enjoying this, let me know and we can do more of this type of thing. Like I said, I just don't, they don't get a lot of views. So I feel like not a lot of people don't really like it or, you know, it's just not my strongest thing and maybe it's boring when I do it. I'm going to go ahead and pull the orange for the flowers. I'm going to use number 430, the red orange. We'll start with that and see if I want a second color so that it doesn't, you know, it blends better. But we'll see. So yeah, I'd like to do more of this type of thing. And then every time I think about it, it is is a lot more work than a flip through or a haul. Or like a coloring and chatting thing. is It just seems like a lot more editing for me. And there's definitely a lot more time into it. And if it's not going to be something that anybody really wants to watch, I don't want to do it, you know. But I enjoy coloring. And I like to share what I do with you, but, you know, not if nobody wants to see it. I know I watch a good bit of color and chats or tutorials. Um, because I just like to watch other people color. And sometimes if I leave on a video of someone coloring and talking, it feels like I've got company while I'm coloring. You know, because I don't always want to watch a show or listen to an audio book. I guess I should talk more if that's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> I'm just over here like silently coloring my flowers. I think I'm going to leave it like that. I feel fine with, with it. And then we've got this little one over here. And I'm just coloring the bottoms of the petals. So it has a little shade to it. I'm not going to town here or getting too complicated. Um, really, it's just these pencils, the chromaflows are another thing that are in my box to be hauled and I haven't done it yet. I pulled them out to color this for fun. So next I'm going to do the yellow flower. Let's get him out of the way. Let's go with the golden sun. That's number 300. All right. So number 300 golden sun because the other brighter yellows look too much like the moon and it's touching the moon and I don't want to have it, you know, looking too similar. I want it to stand out a little bit because it's a flower. But yeah, I think I was saying, you know, I took a break in between the marker and the pencil. So I think I was saying stuff about like, if you look through my flips or my hauls, you'll see a lot of books that I have. So if there's something you want to see colored or certain pencils or, you know, with using watercolor, however you want to see something, just let me know in the comments because... I do better with um, suggestions because I think a lot of the time I just feel like people don't really want to see. Like, I just don't think that anybody wants to see what I'm doing when I'm just coloring regular and I am picked whatever I picked and I'm just kind of going to town. I do have an idea um, for a very specific coloring video, which I'm going to work on soon. And then I have a few requests for products to color with that I had since before I took my break. Um, so I want to get those started, completed, and up on the channel. You know, but if anybody has suggestions, I'm more than open to hear them. All right, next we'll do the uh, pink flowers. And we're pretty much getting close to done with the pencil part of this, which is amazing. It's not a lot of work. Um, for the pink, I'm going to go with the hot pink, number 810. I will be adding the colors, numbers to the screen as much as I can because I know some people do better with seeing them than hearing them. And if you do follow along with me, then 
please post it to Instagram and tag me so that I can see what you did with yours. I know we have different ideas. We all do. And I love seeing other people's stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and speed through and do the other two pink flowers because I'm going to do them the exact same way I did the rest of them. Okay, so that's all our flowers. Also, let me know if you prefer seeing it sped up or if you'd rather I just did the first one and then went off screen and came back because um, that's certainly an option as well. I'm going to go ahead and color our branch because that's our last thing. I'm not going to do anything with the moon right now because I'm not sure what I want. Uh, let's see. What am I going to do with this, this branch? I'm going to go in with number 1840 Mocha. And this one should be dark enough to do something. Oh, let me... There's a natural brown, number 2100. I'm going to grab that first. I'm going to do that under everybody's feet. Just to have a little bit of shadow, I guess. I hope we're not moving as much with this frame. I'm going to have to um, check them both and see which one. You know, if the part where we did the marker was less movement or this part is less movement. Because I honestly just don't know. All right, so I'm gonna give this book a little turn. So I really do have a hard time coloring up and down like I'm supposed to. Mm, I guess there is no supposed to. I can do it however I do it. So this, what I'm putting in is 2100 natural brown. Um, these chroma flower in my to be hauled pile, I think I started talking about it. I really like how they're laying down on this paper. I'm not going to pretend that I haven't been using them because I have. I've been using them quite frequently. Um, but I enjoy them on this paper because I haven't, this is the first time I'm using it in one of her books, Denise Klett's books. And I do like them. I like the color range a lot too. I'm just going to get enough color on here so it doesn't look so boring and flat. And there's nothing wrong with flat either because sometimes I just like the color with markers because I think it looks like comic book like. I like that. All right. So that is everything that's going to get colored with colored pencil. And I did not use the mocha. So I'm going to put that back. And then we have to figure out what we're going to do for a background on this sky. And I really do think it's going to be some sort of water medium, whether it's Neocolor 2s or watercolors. I don't know yet. But I'm going to go find out what I'm going to use. And I'll be back to do the sky in just a minute. I decided to pull out watercolors for this. And I've got this Mei, Ling, Mei Liang paint set. Um... I do have my swatch card here. I think I'm going to go to start with this fresh blue here. So what I need to do is find that within the... They have this nice little card in here that lays on top. And I'm just going to get it wet. Um, by no stretch of the imagination do I consider myself to be good at watercolor. So don't expect some kind of lesson. Just more of a watch and see what happens kind of video I guess uh so yeah I put a little bit of water in the flash yellow because I may put that over the moon but I'm not entirely positive yet so we'll see um I don't think I want to put any sparkle or watercolor onto any of the birds or anything so yeah let's just uh go ahead and see what happens let me move this card so I can use the little palette guy I'm going to give it a little turn. Okay. 
And I just picked up a big old brush. Like I said, I don't know anything. I just play. And sometimes it works out great and sometimes not so much. I'm just adding some water to there and getting some more paint. And I guess I have to take this kind of off camera because I don't want... Oh, my paper doesn't spread enough. Hold on. I don't want um, to cover anything because I need to get through this whole background. There's no end to it. And I don't want to cut it off since it goes to the very edge. And that is as far as that's going to go. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's just jump in, I guess. Start splashing some water and pigment down on the paper. It seems to be repelling it. I didn't do anything to the paper, just so you're aware. Ooh, I touched the moon twice. No, bad job. I definitely don't want to touch anything, but I thought I could get away with a... I probably still can if I go over that with that blue flash. I'm just laying down a layer of some blue, and it's probably going to be all blotchy looking which is fine by me because I'll come back when it's dry because these are single sided pages and I'll kind of just try to make it better this paintbrush is not my best idea notice how I'm not going to stop and get a new one though because well I don't do that I make mistakes and then I just keep on making them. I just want to get close to the edges and try not to destroy the page next to it. There, that's good enough. And then a little more water, a little more paint. So we got to make our way all the way around this page. I am quite confident that there are a million and one people you can watch who are better at this than I am because painting is not like a thing I do very often um that one I couldn't see which blue I was in I know it's off camera for you but I'm just getting water and some pigment and more water all right back to my birds or my sky for my birds. And like I said, I will be coming back in here. Because if I get what I think I'm going to get. Oh, I just saw that we never colored the leaves. I'm going to have to go back in with the pencil. Ah, Sorry, guys. Y'all probably saw that when I missed it, but I didn't. I'm just cutting in there to the sides of the leaves. Anyway, I was trying to say something and then I stopped to complain about whatever it is I just did. Oh, forgot the leaves. Um, Yeah, what I'm thinking will happen is because this is just so like slapped on here. When I come back in, when it's dry... I will get a different brush and try to like pounce the paint onto it and maybe that will give us between this layer and that layer like an interesting texture for the back. Mm -hmm. That's my thought but I don't you know we'll find out and I know I've discussed my secret weapon before if I mess this all up, it's fine because I'll wait, it'll dry, and then I'll do what I always do if I mess up, which is make an entire acrylic background. Because I can do that in blue and it'll cover up all this paint. Just, I don't like to do anything without knowing I don't, I, I need to know I have a backup for when I screw it up. Because if I don't have a backup, I'll never try anything. So this may look bad. But it may not, too, when we're done. We don't know yet. 
And I'm trying really hard to learn how to judge myself less harshly to judge myself the way I would somebody else, which is to say, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't judge somebody else if they tried something and it didn't work out. But for my own self, somehow, you know, I got to be mean about it. Um, so I'm trying really hard not to do that. Plus, I think I just painted my entire mat blue, but we're okay. Or I'm okay because it's not that big of a deal, I don't think. I'm going to get in these little tiny holes. Yeah, definitely going to get a different paintbrush for the second layer. This is not my idea of a good time. I am going to go ahead and speed this part up. I'm back with my super wrinkly and crinkly page. Um, I did take out or I added water to fresh purple. So now I'm using fresh blue and fresh purple to try and <laughs> to try and even out what I've already accomplished or done or however we want to word what happened over here so far. I am just adding some water and some colors to the palette. And there's the purple, mixing them together. Who knows, you know? We'll just, uh, I'm actually gonna get my little pipette and add more water to this because I just want it to be like a little bit of a wash. I don't want it to be really thick. Just wanna see what we can do to make my little messy page less messy. I'm going to go into these little tiny spots. Actually, I think I want another paintbrush to drag it around in there. Okay, so let's spread this guy out. So the little spots are easy. They look nice and neat because they're little. Let's get a little down here. And I don't want that to bleed over into the flowers because it's um, a little bit runny, you know, because it added so much water. And I like the purpley blue. I think the purple is going to look nicer for me. Is there any more tiny spots? I don't think there are. I mean, in between these things, but I'll deal with that. There's one. I am dabbing the brush. If you can't see what I'm doing, I'm just kind of dipping and dabbing. And put that down. Get a little water. I always get nervous doing this on camera. Like when I'm doing it at home by myself, I don't really care. Um, and like I said, I don't profess to be any kind of... Uh, like watercolor artist I literally am just trying to figure out what I'm doing you know um, there are people much better at this I would not watch me and think oh she knows what she's doing because she does not I'm getting my smaller brush to get in around these um, head feathers but yeah I wouldn't watch me and think oh there's somebody who knows something if you're looking for tutorials, there are, I'm quite positive, a thousand of them you can find on YouTube and they would be much better at their craft than me. This is uh, me playing with toys for fun. So, <clears throat> you know, take that for what you will. Like when you see a finished page of mine and I say I've used watercolor and you think it looks good. This is what it starts like and sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Alright, I'm just going to finish up these little tiny weird spots that I know I can't get in there with the big brush. And I'm not dabbing. I'm forgetting to do that. I'm pushing and I don't want to push. Um, I'm going to just do around this little bird so that it's not going to be hard for me to get in that little center there. 
And then I'm going to go back to the big brush and kind of push it around, I guess. And I hope it's visible, but I am just, like, picking it up and dropping it back down and spreading it. And hopefully we're going to get a more even coat this time. And with that blue underneath, there won't at least be any, like, horrible white spots. Because I'm not a fan of those. And I can always come back in again with more until I rip the page, which I've done numerous times. Um, numerous times I've ripped the page. I know you can put water down first, and that supposedly makes everything spread better. Um, I do have a slight fear when it comes to playing with watercolor that I will destroy the page before I finish it. So I don't like to add water to the beginning. I need to... A lot of the times I don't think about whether or not I'm going to use watercolors. And then by then it's too late to put down watercolor ground or anything. It's just like, well, <clears throat> now you're there. You're just going to do whatever you're going to do and hope for the best. Um, so that's why there's not any down. I wanted to be... Like, I thought I might use watercolor on this, but I also wanted to be kind of honest and true to how I color, which is just, oh, like, last-minute addition. Let's throw that on there. And then it becomes whatever it becomes. You know, it's a little harder or easier, depending on what I'm trying to throw it, throw at it. But, you know, I'm just hoping we get enough of it covered and it's not too... Ugh. I don't know, not messy is not the word because it's messy, but like there's not too many weird lines and stuff. I don't want to deal with all that. Like you can kind of see some of them in the work already. But it is what it is. And it doesn't help that this page is so wrinkled that I can't there. And like I said, if there's a spot that's really dry or light, I can come back into it with the paint once it's dry. Never go over things again and again when they're wet. That much I do know because that's the shortest way to destroy the paper. I'm just trying to get around that moon. So I really don't want to color the moon purple. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and keep doing this. Um, I will come back to show you if I go back over it, but I'm only going to do exactly what I've been doing. It's just one coat and then come back and show you if I add more um, color in certain spots to like fix bumps and spots that are showing. Because, you know, I want to try and make it... It's okay if it has texture, but I don't want it to look like that's where she stopped painting. Which is what we've got right now. Um, so yeah, I'll be back in a little bit and we'll do some more. So I finished my sky and I'm not mad at it. Right now it's in a uh, ramen soup box because I'm going to sprinkle stars. And I'm doing that with... Um, Royal and Langnickel Essentials Titanium White Paint. I'm just going to put some in a palette on the side, which you can't see because I'm in this box. And I'm going to wet my brush first and then dry it off. I just have like a fan brush. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of paint. This is visible. And I brought over a piece of paper because I don't want to really get it everywhere. Not enough paint. Fair enough. So I do want some big splotches and some little splotches. I think I'm splotching me more than the book. Let me get a little bit more. There we go. My brush wasn't wet enough. And I'm just going to do this till I'm happy. Um, I'll speed this part up for you so you don't have to 
stare at me doing this, but I'll do one more little section so you can see what I'm attempting to do. I'm in a bad spot. This box is very high. I'm just taking a dry paper towel and trying to rub out the white inside the moon because of course I got some in there because why wouldn't I? And it doesn't really matter because I'm going over that with some sparkle anyway and I'm taking it off of the birds anywhere that it's really just not supposed to be stars. Um, so yeah. It comes off pretty easy on the parts that have the pencil on them because it doesn't want to stick. There we go. Alright, so that's... See, I pulled up pencil instead of just paint but that's not too bad um so yeah when i come back we'll do the moon and we'll be close to finished for the moon i am going to go ahead and use the flash yellow that i showed you from the mailing paint set and i am just gonna hopefully the rest of this white is dry i'm just gonna start in one spot and just like i did with the markers just go all over till it's on there and there is a bit of white but it's not enough to worry about at least by my non-exacting standards um, you'd have to decide for yourself if you need it to be better protected or not so yeah I'm just gonna pull this yellow all through here Make sure I get in all the little corners and cracks of the moon. And get it spread all over. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this part up. Alright, so that's what it looks like with the moon covered, and then I'm taking just a thin brush and the rest of my white paint that I had put in a palette, um, and where I didn't feel like I could really get in there, I'm just putting some more dots. It's like I'm afraid to touch the paper, man. Alright, so... Yeah, I just wanted to look like we have enough stars in the places I was really afraid to go because the birds were there. Also, I have that sh slump over here. I'm going to pull that off with my finger. That's not going to be fun. There we go. And just add here and there. Like, I like that some of the dots are bigger and some of them are lines because it kind of looks like shooting stars or whatever. But yeah, just enough to... Oh, I don't think you can ever have too much stars. That's my personal problem, I think. I'll cover this whole paper. I mean, I feel pretty good about that. So this is with all the watercolor on it, the acrylic. Um, looking at it, and I don't really feel like, yeah, no glossy accents or anything. I don't want to use my paint pens. I like the black line work. Hmm. Oh, that's right. We've got to finish up those leaves. I grabbed number 1620 tropical rain which is kind of like a tealy blue and i'm just gonna try to get in here real carefully and color these leaves and not drag paint everywhere so we'll see how that goes 
I can't believe I forgot them in the first place, but I did. And that's okay, you can always go back. Obviously, because that's what we're going to do. Yeah, there we go. That looks better. But I hope you enjoyed watching with me coloring like this. Um, You know, I'm not an expert. I didn't do anything expert-like. I just colored. Um, but if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments. And we'll do it again with a different page. And if you didn't enjoy it, you can let me know that too. Just tell me what you'd like to see instead. I'm going to move these papers out from behind here. And I'm going to stand up. Just so you can see how shiny our moon is. Because he's dry. Super shiny. We're still waiting on the drops to dry. Once everything on the page is dry, I am going to just flatten it in between two books. This is the last page in the book. So we didn't, you know, make the whole book bad and the page before it the inside corners are or inside section is clean and dry and doesn't have purple in it so i consider this a win and i am very happy with the finished product i hope you guys like it too and until next time coloring friends have a very colorful day bye